Hello and welcome back to another episode of Luthier Quick Tips. In this episode, I'm going to expand a, a little bit about uh, what I talked about in the last episode, which was uh, where I discussed the speed of my CNC machine. And I wanted to address some comments and some concerns that people have uh, raised over the years since I've offered this assembly manual on my eGuitar Plan site. And, uh, but before I do that, I wanted to give a shout out to all the people who uh, have offered some really supportive comments, especially those of you who have sent me photos of your CNC machines uh, as they were being constructed and completed. And later on in this video, I'm gonna share some of those photos with you because I think it's kind of cool to see how other people interpret the, the, the plans and how they have built the machine either exactly as I did or how they've modified it to accommodate their own specific needs. So uh, stay tuned for that. But with respect to some of the comments and concerns that people have raised, the, the common thread has always been that the parts and materials list does not include sources. And as I've explained numerous times before, it simply isn't possible to do that. There once was a time when you could, you could list out all the parts and then the part numbers and then the source of where to purchase them because everything remained pretty constant. But in the modern era, that's no longer true. If I list a source where you can purchase, for example, a lead screw or a anti-backlash nut, what's available today might not be available tomorrow. And as a result, in order for me to maintain a source list, I would have to inspect every single link every single day. And I just simply don't have time to do that. So instead, what I've done is I include a description for those uh, parts and materials in that parts list. And then all you have to do is copy it and then paste it into your browser and do a search yourself. And I can tell you right now that almost every single part on this machine is still available, not just from one source, but from multiple sources. The only part that I'm aware of that may no longer be available is the ST25 breakout board that attaches to the Arduino Uno in the controller. And unfortunately, the gentleman that I purchased that part from several years ago appears to no longer be making the part. Oddly enough, it's still on Tindy where I purchased it, so I'm not sure if that's just a temporary thing or if it's permanent. At any rate, there are multiple uh, breakout boards that are similar, that do the same thing, that are available. So all you have to do is do a little bit of a search on your own to find it. Now, having the ability to search for, for the parts is really a key indicator as to whether or not you can actually build this machine. This is not a complicated machine to build. It's actually fairly simple. Uh, there's a little bit of cutting and drilling, but a lot of it is also just bolting pieces together. And if you can't use a, an internet browser to search for a part, you're probably not going to be able to make this machine. That's, that, that would be a red flag. Now, as I've also said in the past, before you tackle a project like this, it's a good idea to download demo versions of all the software that you would use to run a machine like this, to design your guitars, to um, build the G-code files and do all that. And just go through the process of using that software, design a guitar, create some uh, tool paths, and understand how all that works. If you struggle with any of that software, you're not gonna be able to do this. And you're not gonna be able to build it. Um, because the option to building it is actually to purchase a finished turnkey machine. But as so often happens to people, and I've known this, uh, I've known a lot of folks who have experienced this before, they will buy this turnkey CNC machine, put it in a corner of their shop, but then they'll run into problems trying to get the software to work. They, 
and it's not a technical thing. It's just they don't have the ability to grasp the software and the complexities of the software. And so that machine ends up gathering dust. So before you pull the trigger on, you know, either buying a set of plans or a finished turnkey machine, you need to understand how the software works and what's involved on uh, the front end of the process of using a CNC machine. You also need to understand the terminology behind all the different components that are used in this machine. That's how you search for things and find uh, sources for the parts on the internet is by understanding what those numbers mean. A lead screw, for example. Now here's, here's a good test for you. If you want to know whether or not you're going to be able to source the parts and material to build this machine, do a search for a half inch diameter 10 TPI 5 start Acme lead screw. I know for a fact that there are several uh, suppliers out there who offer those lead screws, but People have told me they can't find them. And the reason they can't find them is because they're not searching the correct terminology. So I would challenge you to, to try to do that. And uh, before you actually attempt it, do a little bit of research to understand what those numbers mean. And that'll help you to find somebody who actually is selling that type of lead screw. As you do your research to understand how a machine like this is assembled and then, of course, how it works, I would highly recommend that you get your information from trustworthy sources. Uh, as I have learned over the years, it's really questionable as to whether you can trust a lot of the social media resources such as Facebook groups that are geared towards CNC uh, technology or um, forums. Forums are notorious for inaccurate information. Now I'm not saying you should ignore that because after all here I am on YouTube which is arguably a type of social media giving you advice. What I would recommend is that you take it with a grain of salt and get confirmation on anything that you might read or, or learn on those um, on the subject. And really the best sources are going to be the manufacturers and the retailers, both for complete CNC machines as well as the parts and components that are used in building those machines. Uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, retailers especially who will, will share with you all kinds of information about selecting these components and how they work together. Uh, another really good resource that I found is buildyourowncnc.com. Uh, the gentleman who um, created that website shares a lot of really good information about basically the engineering behind these type of machines. And understanding that and getting accurate information is key to being successful at building a machine like this. The reason I bring that up is because uh, in the comment that I deleted from last week's video, uh, the person mentioned that they had heard horror stories about the use of the uh, the type of anti-backlash nuts and couplers that I specified on this machine. I don't know where they're getting that information because these type of, of components are commonplace in uh, most of your DIY CNC machines and they work just fine as long as the machine has been engineered to work within the capabilities of those components, which this machine has been. Now, granted, if I was going to be using a much larger, more powerful spindle and aluminum uh, structural components and more powerful uh, stepper motors and a, maybe a ball screws and that sort of thing, I would definitely not want to use some of those components because they aren't up to that task. But for what this machine was designed for, those components work just fine. But that's an example of how you'll hear things or read things on social media that are just way off base and you really have to take them with a grain of salt. Now I apologize if this is sounding like a rant, but I tend to get fired up when having to defend myself against the haters and the trolls. At any rate, enjoy some of these photos that folks have sent to me showing the progress on the CNC machines that they've built 
using my assembly manual. And you'll notice some of these machines are pretty much exactly as you see in the assembly manual. And uh, others are modifications of this design. So at any rate, uh, check out these photos and uh, I will see you in the next episode. Take care.